Okay, so today we're talking about restrictions or finding the domain and also simplifying rational uh, expressions. So before we start, let's talk about what rational expressions are, or better yet, rational numbers are. Rational numbers are fractions. So we'll call it A divided by B, where B cannot equal to zero. Okay. Because B, if B was equal to zero, then the fraction would be undefined, which would limit our domain for our rational expressions. So let's take a few examples here. So example one, uh, let's say we have 8x cubed plus 7x squared plus 20 divided by 3. If we look at the denominator of 3, um, there, there is no x value that we can plug in here that would make this denominator be 0. So therefore, this rational expression or fraction would never be undefined. So therefore, our domain would be given x for all x, x is real. Meaning that there is no restrictions. And so if we were talking about restrictions, then we're saying that there is none. Let's take another example. Five x squared minus three over x minus one. So if we look at this, there is x there is an x value that would make that denominator zero. Simple thing to do is set this denominator equal to zero. Let's find out what would make it zero. So if x was equal to one, it would make this denominator zero. So therefore, our domain would be for all x, x is all reals and x cannot equal to one. For our restriction side, that's easy. Just say x cannot equal to 1. All right. Let's do another example. So let's say I have 7x minus 2 all over x squared minus 2x minus 15. So we need to look at the denominator. minus 2x minus 15 and find out what would make this denominator 0. So you notice it's a trinomial. This looks like a quadratic equation, so we need to factor. You could use the AC method, but if you use the AC method, you'll get, you'll find out it's going to be x minus 5 and x plus 3. So that means I have x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. So with that being said, my domain would be 
for all x such that x is all real and x cannot be let's draw that a little better cannot be negative 3 x cannot be 5 So our restriction is the fact that x cannot be negative 3 or 5. Okay. So if we notice that every denominator, so in other words, if the denominator has an x value, chances are there will be a restriction, the domain will get limited, and if there's no x value in the denominator, then there will not be any restrictions, and the domain will be all reals, okay? So, let's go to simplifying. take a look at some examples there so even when we're simplifying <clears throat> we can still find restrictions as well anytime you have a fraction no matter if they're um, no matter what if there's x values in the denominator there are going to be restrictions so let's say for example there's probably the easiest way to do it um, so let's say it's x squared plus 3x minus 4. Uh, divided by x squared minus x minus 20. So typically what I tell you guys to do is step one is to factor top and bottom. So you have, with AC method, you'll have x plus four, x minus one, And then the bottom would be x minus 5, x plus 4. Okay. Then step 2, I would tell you to find restrictions. Try doing that again. Okay, so what I would do is take the denominator and set it equal to zero. Find out what it makes this equal to zero. So we have x equals five, x equals negative four. So my domain would be for all x such that x is all reals and x cannot be negative 4, x cannot be 5. And my restriction or restrictions would be that x cannot equal to negative 4 and five. Okay. So then step three will be to 
simplify. Actually, let's move this around a little bit. Take this, move it over here. And then erase that. And do this. There we go. Step three, simplify. So let's do this. Let's rewrite what we had. Oh, gosh, darn it. So with that being said, so what I can do now is rewrite what I have up here. So to simplify, I'm just asking myself what's in common on the top and bottom. So therefore, my final answer will be x minus 1 over x minus 5. There's my final answer. So again, first, factor top and bottom. After that, to find the restrictions, I'm going to set the denominator equal to zero to find out what makes the denominator zero. And then write my domain and restrictions. And then I simplify. So basically, anything from top with anything on the bottom, I can cancel out as long as they're the same factors. Because essentially, those factors are numbers. So that would be the way to go. Um, Another example that would be kind of key to know would be, so let's call this example two. So let's say I have seven minus y over y minus seven, okay? They're kind of the same, but they're not. And the only reason why this is gonna work out is because, you know, the, it has the y in these, then the seven, but they're just flip-flopped. So if you look on the top, The 7 is positive and the y is negative. And when you look at the bottom, you see that the y is positive and the 7 is negative. Okay, So they're exactly opposite of each other. So let's say that I take a GCF of negative 1 out of the top. If I do that, if I pull a negative 1 out, I'll have a negative 7 plus y. you agree with that? And the bottom would be y minus 7. So if you look at that, let me rearrange the top here. So therefore, we're going to have just a negative 1 left. But don't forget, we have to write that the domain is that such that x is all reals and x cannot equal to 7. Try that again. There we go.